let's do this problem. Find the intersections of the curves given by x squared plus y squared plus 9y equals 0, x squared plus y equals 0. So another way to say this is solve a nonlinear system. It's two equations and two unknowns, and they're not linear functions anymore. They're not straight line functions. They have squares in them. Um, and so we can think of it as an algebra problem, but we can also think of it as a geometry problem, because each of these equations defines a curve in the plane, and we're really finding the intersections of those curves. And that's often why you'd end up solving a system like this. So what are these curves? Well, the second one is pretty easy. It's y equals minus x squared. Even if we hadn't done the recent stuff we did on parabolas, we would recognize that as an upside-down parabola. And so let's let the, um, let the computer graph that. Okay, so it's upside down parabola, standard going through minus one, uh, one comma minus one, minus one comma minus one. Okay, so what about the other one? That's a little harder, but let's bring it down here. And we're going to complete the square. So we're just going to put this in parentheses, and we're going to take half of nine, so y plus nine halves squared. And remember, these parentheses make a little house for the y's to live in, although we don't absolutely need them this time, but it's a good idea to always do it. And then these parentheses are because that's the grouping that does the completing the square. And then uh, minus, we've got to subtract off that squared. Hmm, well, that's not super pretty. 81 fourths equals zero, but we're going to see that it's actually pretty nice. So now I'm just going to move the constant over, and so we get x squared plus y plus 9 halves, just did a little weird mistypo there, equals 81 fourths, and it's actually nice that that's a square. I'm just going to rewrite that as 9 halves squared. Oh, okay. So that's definitely a shifted circle. It would be x squared plus y squared equals r squared. It's actually x squared plus y plus 9 halves squared is 9 halves squared. And the fact that these are two are the same is kind of nice. It says that we've taken the standard circle center at the origin, We've shifted it down 9 halves, and it has a radius of 9 halves. What that means is it's actually going to pass through the origin, which we can check back in the original equation. If you plug in 0, 0, it actually works. There's no constants over here, and so it actually works. So it's a circle whose center is not at the origin, but that passes through the origin. So let's go ahead and add this graph to this one, and we should see, at least graphically, uh, get an approximation for where they intersect. Now, that doesn't look like much like a circle. Let me just fix that a little bit. Maybe uh, minus 10 to 10, minus 10 to 10. And then to make sure, we're going to say equal scaling. Should that makes circles look like circles. It's like z square on the ti. Ah, that's unfortunate. Even though it was implicitly plotting. Wait a minute. Um, it really should be doing better than that. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Well, let's let it be a good illustration of the limitations of calculators and computers. It really should be plotting the bottom half of the circle. And um, so, looks like it's going to intersect at the origin. Makes sense, because we know these guys both go through the origin, the, the, both the standard upside down parabola and the circle. And then it looks like if we extended the circle down here, which usually works, to do that, it should intersect down here and down here. Hmm. And notice it should be symmetrical around the y-axis. OK, so there's, there's some geometry. Now, what about the algebra? How do we actually go back to these guys and solve this nonlinear system? Well, for nonlinear system, most of the time, we don't use fancy things like elimination, which worked wonderfully well for linear. We usually use substitution. Occasionally, elimination works. But here, substitution makes a lot of sense, because y is equal to minus x squared. Or, hmm, let's see, is that really the substitution we want to make? If we did that, we'd have a little bit of an issue here. Um, if we plugged in minus x squared in, in terms of y, we'd get a fourth degree equation, because we'd get that minus x squared squared. So you want to look out and see what's a smart substitution. It seems like that's the natural thing to do, to plug into the first equation. But look at this. x only appears as x squared. And so this also says here that x squared is equal to minus y. That's actually going to be a better substitution because that'll be just be a quadratic in y. So don't get too enamored of one particular idea. I guess I'll just do it up here near the top. Think about various different ways that you could do a substitution, and make sure that you get the simplest thing that you can.
Aha, that's not bad. So that's y squared plus 8y equals 0. Or that factors y times y plus 8 equals 0. And so y equals 0 or minus 8. Now remember, you don't just stop there. You need to get the x values as well. Let's ch check, though. Uh, of course, we can't really see it, but it makes sense that the circle would come down and intersect at minus 8, minus 8. Okay. So then um, if y equals 0, then that's going to give x, of course, is uh, the square root of 0, which is 0. And if y equals minus 8, then that's going to give x is going to be the square root of minus that, which is the square root of 8. Oh, plus or minus. Plus or minus, because of the symmetry. And so that's going to be equals plus or minus 2 root 2. OK. So there's those three points of intersection. So let me, let me uh, just show you a slight variation on that. What if we had um, took the same system and just modified a little bit? Let me take go below the picture here. What if we raised that up? So x squared plus y was equal to 1. So now x squared is not just equal to y. It's equal to 1 minus y. How would that change the picture? Well, let me go ahead. Um, I'm going to take this. I'm just going to delete it, actually. I'm going to see if I can get it to go from scratch here. So 1 minus x squared. And I'm going to add back in x squared plus y squared plus 9y equals 0. See if it's smarter if we just start over here. There we go. Now it's the, now we get the whole circle, finally. And now that parabola has been lifted up. So now we get 1, 2, 3, 4 points of intersection. Well, how's that going to work? Well, well, let's look at the algebra. Again, if I put y, I solve for y here, I'd get kind of a messy thing in terms of x squared. It wouldn't be horrible, but um, it'd be messy. Again, it's smarter to realize, hey, x squared only appears here, and I'm going to get still a quadratic in y if I just plug that in. So that's going to be 1 minus y plus y squared plus 9y equals 0. y squared uh, plus 8y plus 1 equals 0. And that does not factor. And you could try it if you want, but here's where we might want to break out the quadratic formula. And if you remember where the quadratic formula comes from, it comes from completing the square, which we've been practicing lately. That's one reason why completing the square is so important. So it's minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. So that's just minus 4, all over 2a. And so that's going to be equal to minus 8 plus or minus root 60, that's uh, 2 root 15, it's as simple as it gets, all over 2. Okay, so I can cancel out the 2's, 4, drop that, and just drop that. Actually, let's, you know what, I shouldn't have done it in place, I'll bring it back. So equals minus 4, plus or minus root 15. Now 15 is a little bit less than 16, so this is a little bit less than 4. So even if I start at minus 4 and I add root 15, those are, that's going to be less than 0, if, but not very much less. If I subtract root 15, it's going to be close to minus 8. And so the y values, I get two different y values, close to minus 8 and close to 0. Aha, that totally makes sense. And then I still need the x values. Remember, x squared equals 1 minus y. Oops, that's not where I wanted that. Oh, that's really fun. I'd li I like that, but that's not really what I meant. OK, and so x squared is going to be pretty complicated looking numbers. It's going to be either 1 minus minus 4 plus root 15 or 1 minus minus 4 minus root 15. And then I'm just going to have to square root those guys. Whew. So this is going to be plus or minus the square root of all this stuff. And I'll simplify it in a minute. OK. And this is going to be plus or minus. So these things can get a little hairy. Now, 1 minus a minus 4, that's just a 5. That's not what I wanted to do. 5. And that's going to be a minus, because we subtracted. This is going to be 5 and then plus. 
And there's ways to actually even simplify those kinds of expressions a little bit with the root inside a root, but that's not terribly important. So x is going to turn out to be these numbers. They both have a plus or minus because of the symmetry across. So you can see a small change can make a rather big difference in the problem. But we really still have the tools. Even though the answer is a little uglier, we still have the tools. And we can totally get these um, with a calculator to confirm that they are about, let's see, x should be right close to 1, minus 1 there. And this should, should be about like maybe 2 and a half minus 2 and a half, or, minus, or maybe plus or minus 3 or something like that there. Um, but for the, to start out, most of your problems are going to be like this, where the numbers were not so bad. All right, that's it for now.